Barton FM, following Barton Town. Sport on Barton FM is sponsored by Easy Buy. I'm joined by Aaron Walton. We've got um, two games to look back on. Unfortunately, both defeats, which is something we haven't experienced much in the last uh, 12 months. We'll start with uh, the game on Saturday. 2-1 defeat against Hallam. What were your, your thoughts on that one? It was a funny game, really. I mean, we lost, obviously we lost 2-1, but I don't think there was a great deal in it, was there? No, not at all. Um, Had I enough mean, of chances to win it. Yeah, yeah, there certainly was. There were plenty of chances, but um, just not quite uh, connecting with the ball or connecting with the ball a bit too hard. I mean, the chance right at the end for Ben, I mean, possibly could have got it on target. But I suppose when it's when the goal's raining down on you and you've got to get it in, sometimes the pressure's on, isn't it? So it is. But, uh, frustrated. It must have been frustrated because we were frustrated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I thought a couple of uh, little defensive lapses really um, couldn't quite clear the ball out for the first goal, and um, Brett uh, Agnew slotted it. And the second goal. We, take, we just we, what we don't usually do is give opponents time and space in the box, and he had time and space in the box to bring it down and pick his spot, didn't he? He did, yeah. So you know, and uh, that's something that we really don't do. So, but I mean, we had the penalty miss as well, didn't we? Yeah, very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way he I mean, took a he took a fantastic penalty against us early in the season for Gill, didn't he? I was uh, I'm not I was pretty confident, and it was when it went down right. This is going in the back of the net, no problem. Yeah, he certainly did. You, 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 you were calling that to me, but unfortunately, he's got the uh, Barton Town curse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as I say, if it was if it had gone in at one one at half time, possibly a different complexion on the second half. But, yeah. Uh, as I say, if, if, if ifs and buts were proven up, it'd be Christmas every day, wouldn't it? So, Certainly would. would uh, I was impressed with uh, the new lads on Saturday. Yeah. Um, Fraser Patrick obviously has played for us before, but he's had lots and lots of it. I mean, I can remember mainly Fraser at uh, Bridlington, always being solid in midfield. You know, not getting much past him. I thought he had a good game. Uh, Tatey's back, Grant Tatey's back, and it just doesn't seem like he's been away, does it? No, that's right. Just running and running and running and running. He's like, he's, as I said before, he's like a greyhound. Yeah. He just runs all over the place. And, and then we've got the new lad, Chowrangel. Uh, looks tricky. However, I'll tell you what I, I was impressed with on Saturday. You know, it, I, I said to you on the day, I thought Harrison Coley had a good game before he came off. Yeah. Central um, midfield, yeah. He was, he was, uh, he was. I think he was going to be my man of the match until he got substituted off. I thought he, he closed down well. He got his foot in, um, really, really well. Uh, but uh, as I say, two one, uh, they took the chances and we didn't. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I think I think the only solution to the penalty thing is. Uh, Something like in American football, if Nathan Jarman can just come up for, on for pen, take the penalty. Well, he, <laughs> he said, he said to Mitchell Levi Lewis, he, he said to him, uh, can I come on and take the penalty? <laughs> and he checked me off again and did and said it do not work like that. Because <laughs> I think Mitch is the only one who's actually uh, not missed one. Yeah. Because uh, Scott Scott Matthews, he, he he takes quite a few, but he's missed one this season, hasn't he? I think he missed. Did he miss one at um, Bottersford? Yeah, I think I, yeah, I, I might have done. My, my okay. memory's not that good. Yeah, can't remember. Mm, yeah, but uh, but yeah, as I say, he just did it. one or two fans were going and grumbling, grumbling home, and I thought, well, there's not many Saturdays when we've gone home, like you say, over the last twelve months, a bit de- a bit uh, we have lost. I mean, it generally used to be a, nearly every week that we went to home in that, uh, that frame of mind, but it's very, yeah. very rare now. It is, yeah. So, and, and as I say, no, what a great deal it is. I think from Ferriby at the top, down to probably 12, 13, 4, 14, anybody can beat anybody. Yeah. It's such a tight league. I know if we went to say in tight war, Ferriby, what God knows how many points in front. 
I think I think they I think they've gone over the horizon. I can't see that they're going to lose the number of, the number of games they would need to, and the teams below aren't going to win the games all the time. Yeah, I think they're going to come unstuck once or twice, but I don't think the proverbial wheels will come well and truly off. I don't, th- I don't, think, I don't think they're not going to go sort of four games without a win, are they, or something like that? I don't think. You can't see it, but as Jimmy Greaves says, football's a funny old game. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, they, they, they are. I mean, I've seen them a few times, and I thought it might sound a little bit like sour grapes. But I thought they've been lucky the times I've been um, incredibly lucky against Golker when the, that the Perubis goal was offside. Oh, it looks it looks miles offside when you see it again on the yeah, uh, it was offside. Picture. I, mean, I, I felt sorry for Golker because it brought it back to 2-2. Two, two. Um, however, you've got to keep making those chances and Perubis are making those chances. So and taking it, them when they get them. And taking them, yeah. yeah. So, so they're, they're up. The, the, the league doesn't lie. They're yeah. up there on merit. It's as simple as that. Uh, and, and they are they are winning the games. Uh, same with Emily. Well, I've not seen Emily this season. You tend to see quite a few teams. Um, Winton always seem to win. I mean, I've seen Winton fifteen times this year. That's a lot. It is. I'm, I'm not talking about this season. I'm talking about last season and this year, the, the calendar year. And um, I've never really seen Winton sort of take the handbrake off fully. They've done enough to win. They create the chances, and uh, Josh Walker. He doesn't seem to score many pretty goals, but he scores goals. And yeah. That's what you want with your number nine. It's as simple as that. Well, look, he's number ten, but that's what you want with him, Josh Walker. He'll win you. He'll, he's good at holding the ball up. He's good at getting all the scruffy goals. But scruffy goal counts. They count, don't they? Yeah, they do. Uh, but as I say, you know, Winton will always give you a really hard game. And it's a hard place to go there. Yeah, yeah. And as I say, there's quite a few other teams like Hallam are playing too bad. The Beatles and uh, who else are up there? Penniston are always there. Garforth, I mean, we'll come to Garforth in a minute, but they're always there or thereabouts, aren't they? They are, yeah. So, so um, that was uh, Saturday. Do you want to uh, say anything else about Saturday? No, I think you've mentioned there straight on to Garforth, I think. Perfect. Uh, well, Timing. <laughs> but I mean, it's another game when you look back on it. I mean, we started the game fantastic and probably should have been 3 0 up before they had a shot on goal, really. Yeah. And yeah. again, I probably had 10 opportunities. Three, I mean, three brilliant saves by Wells. Yeah. And you suddenly find yourself 3 1 down at half time. Incredible. Unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, Let's start with the first goal, Sam Cable. It was a lovely through ball. They sort of stopped. They thought it was offside. It wasn't. We, uh, 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 for people listening, uh, if you've never been to Garford, the press box where we are is right at the top. uh, And we're talking grandstands. It is a grandstand. It's a humongous stand, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, And very cold. Uh, and we, we get a fantastic view of everything there. And it was a lovely time run by Sam Cable. He couldn't have timed it better. And an even better finish, because he had to take it round Toby Wells. And, and we, we, we intimated in, in our commentary, Toby's probably one of the, I think, one of the best five keepers in that league. Yeah. And, he's, and he, certainly, he certainly proved it on, the, on Wednesday night with three really, really good saves. So that was 1-0. Then we had another chance. It was Sam again, Sam Cable. He played, I think it was a, a Tom Warby cross. He just glanced it yeah. wide and it just went the wrong side of the post. So that could have been two. And then Toby Wells sort of, um, I can't remember who. who Josh was, Lacey who, header. The Josh Lacey yeah, header, yeah. yeah. It's great save. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was one that, that Toby Wells saved sort of under his body. Mm. Wasn't there? there was a, so that was, it was probably four chances. Three yeah. Or four good yeah. chances. Yeah, and and then we we didn't clear the ball properly, did we? We're struggling no. to clear the ball. We tend to panic a little bit in defence instead of just having a quick look up and, and giving it a good boot. You know, if in doubt, play, uh, play it out, yeah. get it out. And it was an incredible strike, wasn't it? It went to the edge of the area, and he absolutely hammered it back in, didn't he? As soon as it left his foot, that was he was in one thing. Yeah, you, you see them, don't you? Sometimes you think that's in straight in, and I mean. 
How the net stopped it, I do not know. Yeah. If there was, if, if there was no net in there, that would have gone straight onto the uh, air one. Though. It would, yeah. Oh, what a strike! I mean, if they had, if they had Ryan uh, Musselwhite and Charlie Dixon, they still wouldn't have got that. It was so hard. Yeah. So so hard. So that was that was a really good hit. The penalty. Well, I'm sorry. I'm still. I know it. Harrison Crawley. He made a challenge. He didn't say anything. Yeah. It was. I'm, I've got two things to say about this. One, as a game where we were, I don't know how the referee could see that because there were bodies in front of him. Mm. There was at least three to four bodies in front of him, so he could not have got a clear view of it. He didn't ask his linesman. He was very quick to blow up for a penalty. Yeah. And the, and the second thing is, and this is what irritates me, the inconsistency with referees. Because we've had a lot of challenges on Ben Hinchcliffe, on Sam Cable, on one or two others, Tom Warby. Time after time after time in the box, nothing. Referees waved it away. Yeah. It's not like, it's not rugby union where you're looking and mauling and it's the discretion of the referee. A foul is a foul, whether it's inside the box or outside the box. It's not down to sort of your discretion or implementation of the laws. If it's a foul, it's a foul. Yeah. So... That, that, that sort of disappoints me with, with officials. He was very quick to... I mean, it was a penalty, because we had a good view, didn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. A soft one. Yeah, I, think, but, yeah. Uh, I just see it was neat. There was no need to make a challenge. That's the pro- that's the problem I've yeah. got. There's no need to make yeah. a challenge. Don't give the referee the opportunity to... Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, it, it was a little bit of a I think Harrison, he had a really good game on Saturday. And as... as what we haven't intimated, and, and obviously people say five one oh you've got Ammon, you've got Ammon. But virtually, well, all of our midfield were playing yeah. for one reason or another. <clears throat> I mean, Craig King's still injured, Tom Davies injured, uh, Nate Potty was poorly, and uh, Fraser Patrell's um, cook time. Yeah. Obviously, we haven't got Taz there anymore, Taron Hare. So, any team with four, maybe five players. Oh, Jack Tanser was poorly as well. So, you've got a bit of a crisis. You've got a bit of a patched up team, haven't you? Yeah, it really I mean, Oh, was Mrs. Nathan Hottie sat in front of that defence, breaking things up. Yeah, yeah. Smooth as silk. It wasn't as if the lads' heads dropped. I think the heads dropped for about two or three minutes and then they got back on with it. I think it was when there was about 4-1 down. They got back on with it. And they kept attacking. I mean, I saw the Garforth report. They said, oh, you know, 5-1, but Barton never gave up. And they didn't. They kept, they kept going to the end. And th- th- there, was lots of, uh, there was lots of effort there, wasn't there? I mean, I mean could easily have scored three goals in the last part of the game, really. Certainly could. It could have been a lot closer. It could have been 5-4. It could, have been, it could have been 8-6. It could have been any score, really, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah. To be fair. And we, we had lads playing our position. Um, I think Harrison was playing out of position and um, was asking a lot for him to do because he seemed to have a lot of ground to cover. Same with Will Ward, but he got moved around a bit. He looked, I thought it was one of Will's better games. I thought he had an excellent game when he went into yeah. centre half. I mean, they never scored after he went into, into centre half, did they? That's right, that's right, yeah. So that's maybe one to look out for next time if we're struggling. But uh, I thought, yeah, I thought he had a really good game. Yeah. Really good game. And. Um, Josh Lacey, as per usual, yeah. running around, doing lots and lots of work. I don't think anybody had a bad game. No, uh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I mean, what do you say when you're Nathan Jarman? I mean, you can't really have a go at them. I mean, they're no. playing out of position and um, they just give him everything they had, lots of effort. He was just gap but was, I think the word I used, clinical. Yeah, they were, yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, they didn't have many more than the five that they the five they got they didn't have that many more efforts on goal did they they were just no not really I think that uh, Burgess had a couple didn't he and uh, Sam Barker always looks if you give Sam any room you're in trouble aren't you yeah he had he's a good such, game such a good player the miners messy as I thought yeah such it's a good, good description good nice lad as well um, but uh, that, they said they had a few missing but when I've looked at the team sheets and what have you, they didn't really. And I mean, I think 
they had a player who did turn up, didn't they? The Portuguese lad and uh, that's Cam right. Had to play. Yeah. And just slots in like he was playing. He's been playing forever and ever and ever because he's such a good player. Yeah. And so much experience. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, five one sounds really bad. Um, but if you were there, I don't think we could have done much more really. No. Uh, it was it was a decent thing. It, players played as best as they could and I mean like I've said before we've had players we have players out of position uh, players having to do different roles um, so it was it was it was hard work for them I think and it was very cold it? <laughs> certainly was <laughs> yeah but then you see and that, then unfortunately well unfortunately I went to watch Winton last night against Campion because I was interested to see how good Campion were but Campion had players missing so fair bit of Winton won three one, but um, yeah. So there, there, I'm hoping Winton get a home draw, so I'll go and watch him. It'd be good if good if uh, Winton play Garth, that'd be a good game. It, it would be a good game, yeah, yeah. Two de- two decent teams. Yeah. But, uh, but I like Garth, but they're good on the easy on the eye. They're a bit like um, Echoes Hill. They play some nice football. Yeah. I mean, you've got your Charlie Marshalls up there. As I say, you've got your Sam Barkers, you've got your uh, Coupland, who was captain, he, he, he was sublime on the yeah. Tuesday night, wasn't he? He was. Then you've, and then when you're doing all that, you've still got Toby Wells to be in goal. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so I think they're my, I would say they're my favourites to possibly get into the final, I think. Yeah. Who's left. And um, the way they played against us in the final, I hope they hope they, yeah, I hope they win it. It'd be, it'd be good for him if they could. Yeah. So, so, so that we, was Tuesday night, really. Yeah, yeah. We come to Saturday and it's a um could you the well due to the England game it's a two o'clock kick off if it goes ahead. And it goes ahead because we're uh, a little bit worried about the frost, aren't we, and the snow but yeah. um But an Eccles yeah, Hill so side there Eccles Hill. Yeah, much better side than when we played them early in Earlier in the season, on the evidence of what we saw at Winterton a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's right. They, were, they, they beat Winton two one, and again, Winton's a very difficult place to go. Two keeper mistakes. They didn't have Winton had a young lad in from Scunthorpe in the, the academy. They didn't have Nathan Popple in. Yeah. Uh, Pops again. Pops one of my top five keepers in the league. Uh, didn't have a much to do last night. I must admit, um, but. Uh, He's, uh, he's a good keeper, really good keeper. I mean, he, he was at Bart, but he was a really young lad. And I thought he was a decent player then. But he's got obviously got older and, and stronger. Uh, but it's Eccles Hill we're talking about. So Eccles Hill, yeah. always a good place to go. We've been there many times, Richard, haven't we? Seen some great games there, yeah. Absolutely brilliant games. We've had, we've had a lot of change of personnel. Um, I was chatting to uh, when we was at Winton. I was chatting to Adrian uh, Benson, the uh, chairman. He says they've had quite a lot of uh, uh, players leaving when uh, Russ Eagle and Asif left um, last year. Because I think they'd taken them as far as they could. So mm. I think they wanted a change. So they've got the new change. I can't remember the lad. I think he came from Bradford Park Avenue. The uh, the new manager. Um, who controls everything in midfield the captain his name just escapes me yeah yeah he's, he, he's good um, and they're decent in attack as well aren't they yeah lad from Yorkshire Amateurs up front isn't he um, oh Louis Fieldini yeah yeah Yeah, he looked good didn't he we liked him when he was at Yorkshire Amateurs didn't we yeah yeah. we thought, we thought it was good hey, we can pick a player me and you uh, <laughs> other things so we, we must know a little bit well we've got that with football I think we must, we've got to um, <laughs> <laughs> and they've, they've got they're doing an all round decent team and, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's a long journey to go to uh, the uh, <clears throat> the mitten is it the mitten ground or something the mitten stadium or something mitten group stadium uh, it's a long way to go but it's always well well worth the visit 
It'd be nice to go there in, a, in, in warmer climes, Rich, because we always go in the middle of winter, don't we? Yeah, yeah. So, so we play yeah. them in the... We play them in the FA. Um, FA Vars, didn't we, last year? It's a terrific game. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the... Uh, the wingers uh, day, wasn't it? What they call it? Curtis Bates had a great Curtis game, didn't Bates he? Curtis Bates show, that was it, yeah. It was Curtis Bates and day that day, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He had a good... You see, Eccles, yeah, they'll let him play because they won't kick him off the park. They're yeah. Like, they're like Backley and they're like uh, Silsden and um, Golker. They'll let you play because they can play as well. Yeah. And that's what that that's what makes for really good games against those teams. Same with Garford as well, they'll let you play. Yeah. And if some of those don't <laughs> they'll play just a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> but those type of teams they're always good to watch. And they'll always give you a good game, you know, it's not one of them clogging battling games which we've seen before mm. against certain teams I won't mention. Yeah. Uh, for fear of being chastised on the social media. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but um it should be a good game if it's on, but we're just a little bit me and you are a bit concerned, aren't we, about possibly the frost and what have you. So yes. we just have to wait and see. And then uh, I think it's then it's just a run into Christmas, then isn't it? We've got um, two home games before Christmas. We've got Goole and Maltby before Christmas. Two winnable games. Mm. There'll be two tough games because Goole have. Uh, Got the new management team. Yeah. And uh, they've just, they just started to pick one or two points up. I know Winter's beat them on uh, Saturday, but uh, uh, they're just starting to turn that corner. And uh, it's tight down at the bottom as well, Richard, isn't it? It is, yeah, it is. You've got, you've got Yorkshire Amateur just slightly being cut adrift. And you've got Goul, Bottersford, and I'm not too sure who else is down there. I know Golker are down there, and you're thinking, how? How the hell are they down there? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Such a good team. I yeah. know they've drawn a lot of games like we did last season and lost the game, lost the games by the odd goal, but not being tonked or anything such as that. So, but again, it's it, and it's going to be tight at the top, but it's tight at the bottom as well. It is. So, yeah. So we'll just have to, we'll just have to wait and see, but hopefully, I should think uh, Nathan Jamal will want a reaction on Saturday. Won't say from that. Uh, that game and it's just it's just a case of who's who's back yeah who's fit and who's got shook shook off their illnesses that's right yeah yeah, yeah. I know Fraser Papel should be playing because he was only he was only out because he was cup tied that's right yeah so we'll just have to see if Tom Davies uh, recovered from his injury because Tom Tom Davies having a good season yeah well, that's been the thing hasn't it the last few games half of that no Taron Hare and no Tom Davies, so that's half of the back four that started the season so well. Yeah. Haven't been yeah. there. And, and what happens, you lose twice, so yeah. that's telling you something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And um, we've we'll, we'll, we'll missed Kingy as well, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Craig yeah. King, we've missed, we've missed Craig. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's getting one or two injuries now, which I know is frustrating him somewhat, but, <clears throat> but yeah, if, you got, if you've got those players out, you're going to struggle, because I do think we've not got and I know Nathan and I know uh, Daddy North are trying to bring players in, but it's difficult when you're on a budget. Yeah. Um, to to and to keep everybody happy. Um, I know maybe they want to strengthen in one or two areas because when you start to get one or two injuries, um, it's it's difficult. But I've noticed a lot of teams are uh, swapping players about this this last month, haven't they? Mm-hmm. I know Ferriby have uh, got rid of a few and they've, 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 brought, they've brought a good favourite of ours in uh, we, we, again because we spot a player can't we the, uh, the lad from uh, Thackley yeah um, uh, right. Javier well, Virgil that's it yeah yeah, yeah. Well, lovely. They, they said he'd had a real good game on Saturday and I thought well I know he will because he's, he's a really good, good yeah. player and really good on the eye so I hope he does well at Ferriby and I hope he goes on to bigger things as well because he, he really is a good player yeah he is so, that, so that'll be good um, and so you know there's a, there's a, uh, oh, Robbie Stark's gone to Beverly hasn't he and um, Scott Phillips he's gone to Beverly so I think Beverly will start to pick up a bit because they will start to struggle um, they'll pick up there in the division below so as I said there's a lot of players moving around somewhat so 
strength than, than bolster the squad. Yeah, it's um, low on numbers, sure. definitely. Because we are, I think we've. I mean, we have got a few games in hand over most of the teams. I, mean, I think we've got maybe two or three on most of them. Yeah. If it's all right having games in hand, you've got to win them. Yeah, because we're dropping, we're sort of a bit behind that aim of two points a game. We're down to yeah. uh, 30 off yeah. 17 now, so we uh, could yeah. do with the three points. But, 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 I mean, a couple of wins and you're back up and you're, you're, you're back running again, aren't you? So, yeah. Um, and we're not. It's not a disaster. We're not a million. Oh, no. No. I mean, and I think teams are going to struggle on on heavy pitches, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's heavy pitches and there's marsh lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm, I've seen cross country races running better conditions. <laughs> yeah, mate. It's like it's like somebody. It's, it's, uh, it's like somebody's run the national cross country over it before the players go on it. <laughs> yeah, mate. It, it, it really. Um, somebody was saying that you know they were many years ago they were digging down behind the goal. I don't know what I think. Probably digging for gold. <laughs> they were digging down and it was water. Then they got about I don't know about a foot down and it was like just so hard they couldn't get through it. Uh, so I don't know what it is. Obviously clay or something. But he said it was like. Like hard as wood. Down Good there. grief, blimey. But again, you know, the pitch obviously they've turned it round and they've <coughs> built houses on it and um, they've, uh, they've filled the drain and there was a drain down where the um, cricket pitch end. There was a drain all the way down there and that used to fill up with water in winter. But that's all been filled in and you've got you've got no drain down the side where the um, marsh lane is. The drain where the car park is, or the dike, which seems to be still water, doesn't it? Um, well, I've got a few people up down there. And I've really not, no. The, um, the approach into Barton on Pasture Road, that doesn't seem to have much water in it half the time as well. It's always clogged up. So, they really need sort of digging out, to be fair. That might help. Yeah. But I think it just needs some drainage in it. Yeah. To be fair. And then... <clears throat> You sometimes wonder, well, should you have 4G? But then you're talking, you know, talking ridiculous money for that. And then, do you want your players playing on 4G all the time? It doesn't. I don't think it equates to good football. Although, Barton are very, very good on 4G, aren't they, Rich? Yeah, true surface. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, every time they go on 4G, they very rarely get beat. I mean, they beat Hemsworth, they beat Hansworth last season. Didn't yeah, they? yeah. They always, they always beat Stavely or give Stavely a good game anyway. Yeah. And there's, there's the three off the top of my head who have got, uh, got four that's or five G. That's right. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. That's it. That's our little conclusion. Yeah. Let's hope uh, for a game and hope for three points. Hope for three points. That's right. So, um, hopefully we'll we'll. Uh, Tune into uh, Barton FM. You'll you'll hear me and Richard on uh, Saturday afternoon. All be well. An hour earlier than usual this week as well. Yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. An hour earlier. So get your clock set for two o'clock. For the latest Barton Town news and information, visit the club's website at www.bartontownfc.co.uk. That's it for this edition of Swans Talk. Thanks for listening.